Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I got what I think is a lovely looking watch from Seiko here. This is their new Seiko Prospec Landmaster 30th Anniversary. Um, the reference number is SLA071J1. Now I've had a few people say about, oh I never mentioned reference numbers and prices and all that, but honestly guys, check out the description below. There's links to the watch and all that kind of thing in there. So if you're after it, it's all in the description. Now, I personally think this is one really nice looking watch from Seiko. This is one of their more higher tier models coming in at around about £2,400. Um, but there's quite a reason for that when you actually look at it. There is, it is a really, what I think, a good looking watch with a good movement. But before I get too far into review, I've got to say a massive thank you to Ryan and the team over at Francis and Gay of Commentary. Now, as I've always said, they've always got tons of stock, really worth popping in if you're in the Midlands area. If you're a little bit too far afield, um, check out the website, uh, check out the description below, and I'll leave a link to the uh, website there so you can uh, see if they can get you a watch sent out to you. Now, sizes of this. We're talking 42 millimeter case size, but the bezel is actually 41.5, and on this type of watch, that's what you actually read. The thickness, contrary to what Seiko say, I get at 13 mil. The lug to lug across the body of the watch is 49.5. The end links a little bit further out at 51, but honestly it sits really well on the wrist, so I wouldn't worry about it. Bracelet is 20 millimeters. Now, to me, this watch is the dial. The dial is absolutely gorgeous. It's so nicely done. This blue just looks superb, but there's all these hatch markings, um, on the actual dial, it gives us different reflections and different hues of color. I think it's absolutely stunning, really have done a really good job of it. Then I love how they've got these applied hour markers going around, uh, around the outside, and these are full of loom, as too is the, the two very nice, well, the three nicely polished hands. The loom is exceptional, like you would expect on a Seiko. Now, I say the applied Seiko logo, does look really good on there and then below what some people yeah some people don't like I've got no problem with it really is the X for prospects um, series of watches there automatic and 20 bar yes this watch is their landmaster but it does actually come with 200 meters of water resistance now that means you can pretty well do everything in it you can go scuba diving the full works if one so desired so that is no problem now if you're really quite eagle-eyed, you might notice the second hand is gliding round ever so smoothly, so much more so than on an regular looking Seiko. That's because this watch beats at eight beats per second, not the regular six beats per second you get on a normal Seiko. Now, if you, whenever you see the two side by side, it's really noticeable. And on this watch, it just looks really, you know, it makes it so much better. I love the way the light reflects on these polished sections of the hands and hour markers. It just looks so good, I think. Now, as we come past that, we have this sapphire crystal. It is sunken just below the bezel, which is handy if you do place your watch, you know, kind of flat down on a table your crystal shouldn't take any, you know, it won't touch the crystal at all. It will mark, I would say mark, it will touch on the bezel there. Now the bezel, it's a little bit different being that this is a Landmaster, that means they've gone for the, basically the compass bezel. Now, I don't know anyone who's ever used a compass bezel because uh, you can work it out on a normal watch just the same as you can with a compass bezel, but, one thing I'm surprised they didn't do is on this inner section here, you could have almost put down a countdown bezel, which I think would have been nice. Just mark it up every 15 minutes or something. Uh, well, probably every five minutes. You could have marked it around there. Only a thought, but you know, it, it could have been done. So being that it's a compass bezel, there is no ratchet system. It is purely friction. And I'm not kidding. It's dampered perfectly. It really is ever so well done. It feels just that right amount of kind of um, tension to move it. It is absolutely spot on. Really can't fault that at all. It's beautiful to uh, to actually uh, use. Now, as we come around to the outside here, we do have a coin edge bezel, which goes on there, allowing you to uh, grip and purchase the top of the bezel. Now, as you come around, we have this beautiful brushwork. Now, one thing I should mention, 
this watch is titanium so it feels lovely it's around about 130 odd grams i believe which isn't particularly light but for a watch of this kind of stature it really is if this was made out of steel like you get on the marine master 300s it would weigh a lot more so you have this beautiful brush work oh also before i carry on it's got a hard coating on there. So fingers crossed, it should be quite hard. I don't know what rate in the hard coating is taken to. The Seiko Dyer Shield is normally around about 500 Vickers. If anyone knows, please let me know what the uh, Vickers rating is on this. I would be interested. Now, as you can see, brushwork going on there. We have this beautiful polish work um, beveled edge going on top there, sculpting down at the bottom. Really, I think, nicely done. Now, as we come around to this side, we have these really heavy crown guards uh they've done a really nice kind of big made it look very macho and manual manually uh, manually manly sorry uh around the crown there the crown is a screw down crown as you can see there there you go doesn't screw out very far but it does screw down and it is an unsigned crown which i was quite surprised i thought i might have signed it but i've got no problem with that so that screws down now on the back, unfortunately, you don't have a display case back. I know not everyone likes that, but you're all strange because they're far better. Um, but anyway, it's a solid case back on there. Now, underneath there is their movement, the 8L35. Now, I put this on the time graph earlier, and it was doing a sterling job at around about two, two and a half seconds um, in the position I had it in, plus... Now, that's it's the 8L35 movement is a step up from all their 6R range and yeah, it, it really is a far better movement. It's kind of their answer to the ETA2824 really, um, but it's one advantage it has over the 2824. It has a second shock setting over the escape wheel, which is quite unusual. I'm getting a bit geeky, a bit watchmakery, but the to have two lots of shock settings on each plate is really quite cool. It's something Rolex also do on theirs and some of the older brands as well. So it is very nicely done. It has 26 joules and run about 50 hours of power to its name. So that is actually quite nice. Still use their magic pour system, but in a slightly different way. It's quite cool how they do it. So anyway, getting a bit geeky. Let's talk about the bracelet. The bracelet is quite nice. It's not perfect, but it's quite nice. I like the way you can actually see where the blind studs are. You can probably just make out a slight groove there. So they've got a stud which goes all the way through. That holds that together. And then spring the actual pin locks that. So you can actually see it, which is quite unusual. So, But it is a pin system, I believe. Um, and it goes all the way around there. You have four levels of micro adjust. Now this way it gets a little bit weird. As we come around here... This clasp is quite a chunky clasp. It's uh, got to be over 20 odd years old now. It was, I think it was originally released on the MM200. Fold over, it's okay. As you see, I've got the stickers on here. So as you pull this back, it's got a party piece. If I pull this, you can see it lifts up here. And what that means, it comes out here. Now to be fair, it's not pretty, but it's a very cool system how they do it. Now, wouldn't really be good while you're wearing a watch because it'd look a bit funny if it sticks out like that. But this is more a dive link extension. A uh, little bit strange why it's on this watch, but I suppose you are paying £2,400-ish for this, so you do have this kind of system on there. It's a nice thing to have, but I don't know. I'd never use it. I don't go diving, but and this watch being that it isn't a dive watch per se is a bit strange. But there you go. That's the one, that's the bracelet on uh, the clasp on there. It is quite cool though. Let me put it on my wrist so you've got an idea how it looks. Let's zoom out there. Um, quick wrist check. I'm still wearing my Aura 65 dial because I served it, your, serviced it the other week and I wanted to check the timing of it rather than put it on the machine. Bob is wearing the sicker design. I quite like this watch. Uh, not for everyone, I know, but. You wouldn't believe how many comments when people say, what is that watch? Quite cool. On one of John Keeley's very nice leather straps. So quick wrist check. My wrist size is seven and a quarter inches. Just quickly slip this on. And there you go. So seven and a quarter inches. And I think that looks really good. See what I mean about thickness? It hunkers down well. And also the lug to lug. Uh, some people might worry that it might be too long, but because it, the way it sits down and curves down, it sits on the wrist really, really well. I think this is just a lovely watch. Um, that blue, you just 
it doesn't get old. It really is a handsome looking watch. Anyway, guys, um, most importantly, stay safe out there and see you in the next video. Bye.